Welcome to the NC Spin After Spin. Additional comments from our panelists just available on our website. I want to ask each of you, what do you wish you had said on last week's show, but you didn't? Chris Fitzsimon, I'll start with you. Well, uh, we talked a lot about what happened this past week in the, uh, the special sessions. I was sort of interested, and Becky brought it up, and others did too, about the, the divisions inside the Republican caucus. It's pretty unusual when you have people, uh, Senate leaders, uh, arguing among themselves, openly Republican leaders on the Senate floor, and you had Republicans clearly arguing, uh, reportedly yelling at each other about HB2 behind the scenes. A question for Republicans, they have a supermajority, they run the General Assembly, uh, but will those uh, splits continue as we head into 2017, or can they patch up those differences? If they can't, I think you'll see a lot of interesting coalitions maybe happen in the 2017 session on some key issues. Should be an interesting session. Becky, what do you wish you'd have said on last week's show? Well, I, I just wish I'd been able to elaborate a little <clears throat> bit more on the juvenile justice raise the age issue. You know, we've talked a lot about how hurried these short sessions have been, these special sessions, not a lot of time to debate things. This is an issue that has really been looked at. This commission has looked at this, studied it, brought lots of different experts to the table for over 16 months. They've also collected a tremendous amount of data of what happens to young people when they're housed with adults. Everything from rape inside the prisons to, you know, going back, um, gang activity, recidivism, all kinds of yeah. things. Yeah, the recidivism, just, um, you know, a lot of information. And there's a coalition that the John Locke Foundation is part of. I'm very proud to be part of that, working on this issue as we move forward towards the session and a lot of bipartisan support for this. It's a really important issue. It's going gonna, it's gonna to take some funding as well as a real commitment to these young people. So it's something I'm really proud of and something that I think is going to make a real difference in North Carolina. Brad Crow, what do you wish you'd have said on last week's show? Well, uh, you know, we're so pressed on time, really didn't get into the multifaceted aspect of the House Bill 2, not only from a municipal governance standpoint with the city of Charlotte the action that they took, the symbolism that they took, and the leadership that it took for the Charlotte City Council to come out and say, we're going to do a repeal and then a full repeal. Because uh, Mayor timetable. Roberts had been opposed to this. Absolutely. She had opposed the efforts in April and, and again in September. Um, you can talk about the internal politics on the back end on the Democratic side with Roy Cooper's involvement and then also on the Republican side. But it comes down to a couple of things I see, Tom. It comes down to human rights and civil rights for transgendered North Carolinians. It comes down to uh, any type of anti-discrimination, inclusion, and diversity language for the state of North Carolina and making sure that there are uh, rights that are respected for the LGBT community. And it comes down to dollars and cents. And hopefully over the two week hiatus that we're going to see for the Christmas and New Year's holiday, that you know, minds, broad minds can come together, and that both sides will be do, will be willing to get away from the tribal politics that we're in right now, and look at doing what's right for the good of the state. Stop the bleeding. All right, John Hood, what do you wish you'd have said on last week's show? I'll follow up on what Brad just said because I agree with it, and and add that on both sides of the HB2 sets of issues. National groups have come in and made North Carolina their test case. They want to prove something about their national movement, whether it's we can stop bills like this or we can pass bills or ordinances like this. And to some extent, I mean, that's natural. People get to do that. You know, lots of people have interests across the country and they get to be involved in issues around the, the country. But it has somewhat hampered the ability of North Carolinians who might disagree on uh, anti-discrimination ordinances and how far they should go and should there be exceptions for people on you know private property versus public property or different con religious consciences or the question of transgender kids in school how should you accommodate them what's the most appropriate way to accommodate the privacy interest of all the kids in the school the national groups have prevented conversation they have at they have actively suppressed and tried to stamp out conversation across these lines and that hadn't been helpful in in pursuit of their own uh, advocacy. Yes, and I'm, I'm not saying that they're evil people. I'm just saying they do not want compromise or middle ground discussions in North Carolina. It does not fit their their interests. It just doesn't. Interesting. Well, thanks for watching the Afterspin. We'll have more video all during the week on ncspin.com.